In this video, we're going to learn how to find the remaining balance on a loan. In a previous video, we built this loan amortization table or amortization schedule. And when we built it, we used some very straightforward formulas for calculating the interest, the principal, and the ending balance. What I'd like to do now is show you how to use some Excel functions to find the interest, the principal, and the ending balance. And show you how to set those calculations up where you don't have to build an amortization table in order to find the uh, payment, interest, principal, and ending balance on any particular uh, month for your loan. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to sheet number two. And uh, off camera, I went ahead and set up sheet number two. You can hit pause now and fill in the spreadsheet and get caught up to where I'm at now. This time I'm setting things up just a little bit differently. Uh, this time I'm taking the exact same loan that I had before, the quarter million dollar loan on a, on a home with a 4% annual interest rate for 30 years with 12 months per year. And I'm going to take that uh, interest rate and that periods per year, the 12 months per year, and I'm going to I'm going to convert those. Uh, for starters, I'm going to make a, what I call a periodic interest rate or a, or a monthly interest rate. So I'm going to type an equal sign in cell C7, and I'm going to click on the 4% interest, and I'm going to, hiding out in cell C4, type a slash to divide. Then I'm going to click on cell C6, where the 12 is, and press Enter, and I get 0.33%. So what's going on here is the interest rate every month is 0.33%. Now, how many months, how many periods are there in this loan? Well, we type an equal sign in cell C8. Then we click on the 30 years hiding out in cell C5, type an asterisk, and click on the 12 periods per year, the 12 months per year hiding out in cell C6. Now, I'm using that terminology periods per year uh, for a very specific reason because I'm trying to be uh, kind of general. If I wanted to do this on a weekly loan or a quarterly loan or a daily loan, I could just change the number of periods per year. Now, it's unlikely that most people will ever need to do that, um, but I still like using the more, the more flexible, the more general language. So I'm going to hit enter and I see that I have 360 payments to make. In fact, I could change this from number of periods to number of payments and it would still uh, be correct. Now what I'm going to do is calculate the payment. Now we've used the payment function before. It's just an equal sign and then PMT and an open parentheses and we click on the rate. This time we're clicking on the 0.33% hiding in cell C7. We type a comma and we click on the number of periods, the number of payments, the number of months which is hiding out in cell C8 360 type a comma again and now we click on the present value. So the present value in this case is the amount that we're going to borrow which is a quarter million dollars hiding out in cell C3 so I'm going to click on cell C3. The remaining arguments are optional. We're not going to need those for this example so I'm just going to close my parentheses and press enter and well I'm done except for I have a negative number so just because negative numbers um, confuse people, I'm going to change that to a positive number by sticking a negative sign in front of the PMT. So here's the question for you. What is my interest and principal and remaining balance when I'm getting ready and when I'm making that 12th payment after I've been paying on this loan for a year, uh, the last month of the year? So I'm going to type 12 for the period. So that's the 12th payment that I've made. And now what I want to do is calculate the interest portion of that 12th payment. To do that, I'm going to type an equal sign and I'm going to type IPMT, which, as Excel says and, and tells you, this returns the interest payment for a given period for an investment. So I'm going to do an open parentheses and now it asks for the rate. In this case, it is the, the monthly interest rate of 0.33% hiding out in cell C7. I'm going to type a comma, so PER is the period for which I'm calculating the rate, which in this case is 12. I'll type a comma again, and now I want the number of periods. These are the number of months that I'm making the payment, which is 360, so I click on the 360. And then finally, the present value of the loan, uh, this is how much money that we're going to be 
borrowing, right? This is how much we're borrowing on the loan. So we're going to type a comma, and we're going to click on the loan amount of $250,000. We close the parentheses, we hit enter, and we get, oh, hey, we get a negative number. No surprise there. This happens every time. And I always do that on purpose because I want to show you a few things. So at the end of the day, in order to get the right answer to get displays a positive number, there are several ways we can fix it. We can go in in front of the C3 in the present value category, and we can put a negative sign there. That's one way to fix it. Or we could have just made the entire function negative. So I'm going to press Enter now, and I have a positive $819. For the next one, we're going to find the principal. Now, we could just take the payment over here in cell C9 and subtract the interest and get the principal, but I want to show you an Excel function that will do that. So we're going to type equals PPMT. So that will give us the principal portion of that payment. We'll do an open parentheses. The rate is again our 0.33% hiding out in cell C7. It's the rate each month. The period is again the 12th period, the 12th month. The number of periods is the number of periods in the loan, 360 total payments we have to make. And the present value is the negative of the $250,000 that we borrowed. And we're going to close that parentheses and press enter. Now what I want to do is I want to check my answer. I want to see how close I am. So I'm going to pop back over to sheet number one where I did the exact same thing but in a table. And I'm going to look at the 12th month. And we see that in that 12th month, the interest was $819.90 and the principal was $373.63 which is what we got right here. Now what I want to do is use a formula to find the remaining balance. And so when I get done, I should get a number of 245,597. So let's go back to sheet number two and let's find out the remaining balance. There are multiple ways to calculate this. Uh, you can look up formulas in textbooks, for example, and, and, and plug in the formulas in Microsoft Excel. But one way to do that is to use the future value function. Think about this for a second. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find some value in the future. So if the present value of the loan is a quarter million dollars, that's how much we've borrowed, we're trying to find what the loan is at some point in the future, in this case, 12 months in the future. So we'll type an equal sign and then FV for future value. We'll do an open parentheses. The interest rate, this should be, get, this should be getting repetitive, right? The interest rate is our 0.33% hiding out in cell uh, C7. The number of periods, now the number of periods is where this gets a little bit complicated. Here, instead of entering the term of the loan, you want to enter the payment that, you've, that you're that you making, the 12th payment. So after you make a 12th payment, this will give us your remaining balance. Type a comma, and you're going to enter the payment of 1193 over here in cell C9. So we'll click on cell C9. Now we're going to use... Now we're going to use one of our optional arguments in this function. In this case, we're going to use the present value argument. So I'm going to click on the PV over here in cell C3, which is the loan amount. So this is going to tell me if I make 12 payments on this loan and I'm paying 33% interest rate, how much will I have left when I'm done? So I'm going to type a close parentheses and I'm going to press enter and I get... Well, I get a negative number and it doesn't look right for several reasons. Not only is it, is it negative, um, the, the number does not look right. Um, for example, over here on sheet one, we should be getting 245 and some change. And instead, we're getting 274 and some change. Uh, 274 in absolute value is more than our 250,000. So we've got a mistake somewhere here. And it's not a mistake I can fix just by slapping a negative number in front of the function. What I have to do is put my negative sign in front of C3. Now I press enter. And lo and behold, I have the, the correct remaining balance. And because of the way I have my spreadsheet set up, I can go into this spreadsheet and I can change pretty much anything and get an updated and correct answer. For example, if I were going to do a 15-year loan, I could come over here and I could change the number of years to 15. And I could press Enter and everything would update automatically for me. If I were doing some kind of business loan that was lasting 10 years and it had four payments per year, I can change the years, I can change the periods per year. And at the end of 12 payments, which would be three years, you would see that I have $185,000 outstanding uh, balance. And I'd be paying uh, almost $2,000 in interest and paying uh, $5,700 in principal. 
And so I, I set this up for this reason because I wanted to show you how if you set the spreadsheet up properly, uh, the spreadsheet will update automatically for you whenever you make changes. And you can build a very flexible and powerful spreadsheet that can accomplish a lot of different tasks and can be used for different, different loans in different situations. Well, I hear the music starting, and when the music starts, that means it's time for me to go. Don't forget to hit that like button, and as always, if you've got a better way of doing this, show us in the comments. In this video, I'm going to spin around and make everybody want to throw up.